Now, we are going to another point of joyful victory. And this is actually point seven, number point seven, that it talks about a number of things here. That in order to clear the garbage, to have a clean life, this point include how to take care of negative thinking, negative feelings, and hurts from people, and negative subconscious mind. Now say it again. That God can heal our negative thinking. Negative, yeah, God can heal our negative thinking, negative emotions, negative subconscious mind, and hurts. You understand? That means if we have negative thinking, now remember we have talked about not to be, how not to be affected by people. We have talked about how to overcome sins. Those are different points of joyful victory. It's handling problem in your life. And now we talk about negative thinking and negative feelings first. As I shared with you about last night, yesterday, the sister who came to the home of the bishop, and we talk about it, that we discover that she has uh, anger and unhappy feelings about the children and other people. And also it all came from negative thinking, the negative thinking or unrealistic thinking, unrealistic thinking that the children has to be obedient, but they're not obedient, so she cannot accept that the children are not obedient. Now, of course it's hard to accept, but because she cannot accept it, she wants them to be good and better, and when they are not, then she has negative emotions, unhappy. So negative thinking will uh, bring negative feelings. For instance, you expect people to be nice around you, when you at your home or at your place of work or in a church, have you come across people who are not so nice in the church? Yes. So when you expect everyone to be good and then they're not good, then you feel angry, right? But if we accept the Bible, what the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So when we see sinners, we say, so what? Sinners are everywhere. So one thing about Having a peace in our mind is to accept that when you come across people, all have sinned and we have sinned also. Now it doesn't mean I want people to stay sinful. I don't want them to be continue to be sinful. But I can accept that they have sinful nature. Therefore, if they mistreat me, even if they steal money from me, I treasure my joy and my peace more than his goodness. Even when people stole from me, I would say, I will let go. The money is stolen already, but that person has to face God. He has a more terrible life, but God will keep pay back to me and I won't get angry. Because I see keeping peace and joy and a positive mentality in Jesus Christ are very, very important. And as I shared my experience after I experience, experience the Holy Spirit, when I pray, every time I pray, I experience joy. I really thank God for that. Hallelujah. Anytime I think of Jesus, the joy will come through. Anytime I just think of Jesus, the joy will come through. And one time I shared with someone about my experience of the Holy Spirit, but that person did not accept it. And she was angry on the phone and hang up the phone. And then that affected me. And I prayed again and I did not have the joy. And then God gave me this idea, handle it right now. So I called her again and apologized to make her that I made her unhappy. I'm sorry if I made you unhappy, but I cannot apologize for sharing. Sharing is not wrong, but if I made her unhappy, I. I'm sorry for that. But she was still angry and she still hang up the phone. And then I said, I already handled it. I'm going to let go. 
And I keep praising the Lord and the joy came back. So I, and then the Lord talked to me and said, it's more important that you keep the peace and the joy and the strength of the Lord than to be that everyone is happy with you. Because there are always some people who don't like you in some ways. We don't have to be affected by them. So one thinking of many people is people should be good. They should be good. If they're not good, I will be angry. And that thinking affects many people and makes them feel unhappy. So now after that time, every time anything happened, let me tell you, in one of my mission trips, I think someone stole a lot of money from my pocket because I thought I trust their family. And later I counted the money, I lost quite a bit of money. And I told the person who was, you know, uh, who, who uh, took me there, and I told the person, please tell your family member, if anyone stole the money from me, he's in a bigger trouble. I'm not chasing after the man to get the money back. I'm not. But I, and I asked him, please tell your family member, if that person stole from me, he's in worse trouble than I because he has to face the judgment of God. And there are some people who actually lose salvation because of stealing money from the church. Because that means they don't really respect God. They do ministry in order to get more money or get more people. They just want to build up a work. It's not to build up the pleasure of God, to, that, to be pleasing to God. So I told the person, but for myself, I just let go. Because God will give me back. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what God will lose money. I can accept that. So I see that it's more important to keep the peace of the Lord and the joy of the Lord so that I'm not affected by anyone. Then I continue to have joy everywhere when I go. You know, everywhere I go, there are some reasons for me to be unhappy. Because some pastors just don't want to learn. Some people just don't want to learn. Yeah. Or if they learn, they just don't learn it. And then I say, well, does it work? You know, I can have negative feeling. But I said, I try my best. No matter how much they learn, and I keep repeating it until they learn it, and hopefully, you know, they don't understand it, ask me, and they learn it, and it can change their life. And my hope is that you can teach other people too. You can teach these ideas to other people. It's not just a message. Every of this message is a general concept that you can use in all your messages. In all your messages, you can talk about how to enjoy God, how to be strengthened by God, it's easy to please God, so everyone can follow God with peace and joy and confidence. So it's not just for one message, it's for all the messages. And also the whole life to take care of sins and not to be affected by people and now negative thinking and negative feelings, all this is for everyday life. So I hope you learn it and use it in your teaching so that all your people in the church, everyone enjoy God, everyone have strength from the Lord, and everyone can experience the Holy Spirit and do evangelism with the power of the Holy Spirit and change people's lives with the Holy Spirit. And also, they take care of the different problems in life. Is that what you want? Yeah. So everyone is changed and built up and trained to serve God. That is my calling, that one of Build up more people to be able to live a Christian life, to have power from God, to serve God, and train other people so that we have more people prepared for the last days. Now yesterday, goodness, the daughter of Bishop, she actually God spoke through her that Jesus is coming back soon. We don't know how long we have. We have to face God soon. So we don't just want to build up ourselves. We want to build up other people. Strengthen other people. Build up a strong church. Build up Christianity in Liberia and different countries. Okay? So today, now I talk about how to keep positive thinking and positive feelings. Now the Bible says this is very important. In Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So above all things, guard your hearts. Proverbs 4.23.
Because from the heart, everything we do flow from it. If we are unhappy, if we are angry, even when we do evangelism, we will have anger. Is that true? Yes. If someone is angry, then when he does evangelism, if the person doesn't believe, then he's angry. And if he does evangelism and that person believes in Jesus, but he doesn't grow much, and then he gets angry. <coughs> you know, some people say, they don't love God, so I get angry. Let me ask you, is that a right reason to be angry? I help them to believe in Jesus, I help them to love God, and they don't love God, so I get angry. Is that right? No. No, no. because then if we let other people's sin affect us, then we lose the joy. When we lose the joy, we don't have the strength to serve God. Now say this with me. If we lose the peace and joy of the Lord, if we lose the peace and joy of the Lord, we cannot serve God with peace and joy. We cannot serve God with peace and joy. And people might serve God with anger and frustration. And people will serve God with anger and frustration. And we don't want to serve God with frustration and pressure. And we don't want to serve God with frustration and pressure. Okay? Now, if people serve God with frustration, what will happen? They will say, oh, you didn't do it. You didn't do it on time. And then they, the facial expression shows the anger, right? Mm -hmm. The facial expression shows the anger. And then the words shows the anger. Even sometimes when some people preach, the words they preach shows a lot of anger. Now, I'm not accusing or attacking anyone. I just encourage you to reflect. Let me ask you, when Jesus preached, did he preach? You don't have faith. You cannot do anything for God. Does he show anger when he preached? No. Jesus is gentle and meek. You know, it's very important. Our life shows Jesus' life. It's not just accomplishing work. It's not just accomplishing result. Okay? Say this with me. Our life quality is more important than the result of ministry. Our life quality is more important than uh, than our uh, Ministry call it uh, ministry results, results of ministry. Our life quality is more important than the result of ministry. Even if someone has brought many people to Christ, but if he has a lot of anger, now people have anger might still bring a lot of people to Jesus. It's true, but then his members will have a lot of anger too, and they think it's right to be angry. So the first thing you want to serve God that shows the glory of God, we want to guard our hearts. Whenever you notice there is anything negative, any unhappy feelings, any frustration, we have to handle it, but not to suppress it. It's very important not to suppress it, but to change it. To say, I don't have to be angry. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If they have sinned, so what? If they have stolen my money, so what? God will give it back to me. I don't have to be affected. I can still be peaceful. The reason why I don't mind anything happen to me, because I know God will give it back to me. God will bless me. It doesn't matter. What they stole from me, what they did to me, it will not take away the blessings of God. Okay? And then, Luke chapter 6, 45. Luke 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So what it says here is, when a good man has the good treasure inside him, Good things will come out, good works will come out, and good expression will come out. And then from an evil man, from the evil treasure in his heart, evil words and evil feelings will come out. So we first start with the inside, it's not just outside. It's not just showing people we have joy. 
Have you seen people who show people their joy, but they're at home and then they have frustration? I have met many Christians who laugh a lot, who is very happy on the outside. And I asked them, are you happy at home? They said, no. I have a lot of depression and happiness, but when I'm in front of people, I will laugh a lot. Some people are like that. Because they want to enjoy the social life, so they laugh a lot. But inside, actually, they don't have much joy. So we need, but you say, bad things happen to me, how can I have joy? We have joy not because of necessary good things happen to us, but we know God is good. And I can have peace and joy from the Lord. And God is helping me and blessing me. Therefore, I rejoice in the Lord. It's from the Lord. It's not from people. If we wait until everything is good before we are joyful, not many of us will be joyful. For instance, when I go to different places, do people really learn it? Do people really learn teaching? Some people will. Some people won't. If I look at the result, if I look at how many people will get the completion certificate, I might be disappointed. But to me, it doesn't matter. I already did my best. I already keep repeating it so that you understand it. I don't have to count the result. I just do my best. At least you pick up something. At least you see that to serve God, you can relax and believe in God's love, right? Do you remember that part? Yes. God is loving me and it's easy to please God. At least you remember that part. No matter what, how little you remember, at least you remember some part. And so I rejoice because of that. And so that's my mentality. What is happening here? Oh, I know, the, the drink. The drink got caught, so that's why it was not okay. So, one thing is, have realistic expectation. Do not have unrealistic expectation. Now many people have unrealistic expectation of the husband and wife. And they hope that the husband and wife will be like someone else's husband and wife. And then when they compare, they are unhappy. So we think, we hope things will be all perfect and then we are unhappy. Or you expect people to be good, all good in the church. For instance, the other day Bishop lost his cell phone. We don't know who stole it, whether it's from the inside or outside. Now if it's from the inside, if someone comes to learn and then steal the cell phone, that's not building up your life and ministry. It's not building up, up. It's, it's, you know, it's tearing it down, it's no point. Now it could be someone from the outside, we don't know who that is. But the point is, we have, if we have a life that has problems, and then we think we are serving God, doing well, actually we're not. God is not pleased with that. And we can handle it. We say, I don't have to be unhappy. I have things stolen from me too, and I say I don't have to be unhappy. It's okay if I lose it. That's a, that way I can keep the peace. So when we have this peace inside, what flows out is always peace. Have you noticed some people that get angry easily? Because they always have anger. We don't, I don't like the people. The people are not good. No one listen to me and they get angry. The anger stay in the heart and then they cannot change people, right? So we want to say, it's in God's hand. Say it with me. It's in God's hand. God cares about them. God wants to work in their life too. If I relax and trust in God, if I relax and, trust and have more peace and joy, I can change them more. If I have frustration, I cannot change them. Okay? Now, in other words, Proverbs 17.22 Proverbs 17.22 a merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So if someone is unhappy, it dries the bone. And you notice know, some people always say, I have headache, I have backache, I have ache everywhere, summer ache, I'm unhappy, I cannot sleep. And you notice know, some people, they have sickness all over the body. But you have noticed some people are healthy and strong. Now I'm 66 years old, and I can teach in the morning, afternoon, and evening, and you still see me full of energy. Yes. 
that's first from the joy of the Lord, the presence of God. And also I do take care of my body to relax and sleep better and eat healthy food, not to eat junk food. So and then and then always have the presence of God to bless me. That way then you stay strong. Some people ask me, they said, we get tired easily. How come you you're so energetic for the whole day long? Because that's from the strength of the Lord and from the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so we see that it's very important that we have the peace and joy and so that the whole life will have good fruit. Okay, the point is now, how to have positive thinking? First, we want to know what are negative thinking. Negative thinking are like this, okay? So I'm going to give you some example of negative thinking. Negative thinkings are, oh, God doesn't help me. People don't like me. There is no hope. I cannot do it. I will always fail. It's always seeing problems and difficulty of themselves and of other people and of God. That is negative thinking. Always saying, it cannot be good. Too difficult. I cannot do it. Let me ask you, this thinking, does it affect the person? Yes. Then a person is very pessimistic has no hope. Now, but you say, my situation is very difficult. It's very difficult. How can I change the situation? But let me tell you, our thinking doesn't depend on the situation. Say it. Our thinking doesn't depend on the situation. If, you, if we depend on the situation to be positive, there will be many days you will be negative. Because situations are just not always good, right? People are very often, they are problematic. But how can we be positive? The positive side, the thinking is from the promises of God. Write this down. The positive thinking comes from the promises of God. And the grace of God comes from His promise and His grace. Because God is always gracious to us. Even when situations are difficult. Even when many people fall down beside us. God can keep me. That I can stand strong. Even when many people fall down next to me. I can still stand firm. That even when people are not nice to me. God can still use me. Can you believe that? So as Christians we believe in God. Not believe in the world. We don't believe in the people. But many people did not realize their negative thinking because they're too used to it. Because we grow up in negative thinking. Because most people around us are negative. Even Christians, many Christians are negative. Only Christians have been trained to be positive. Always look at the promises of God. If not, you look at many Christians, they will say, Oh, people don't listen. Oh, they don't come again today. They didn't come to church today. Always looking at the negative sides, right? Yes. Have you seen that happen around you? Yes. So we want to change that. But, you, but when people like that, don't tell them directly. Don't say you're negative. But we say it. You know, say the grace of God from our heart. We can say, if he says the people are not coming, and then we can say, we'll pray to God to bless them to come. So that's a positive thinking. We'll pray to God to bring them to come. And also, even if they don't come because of something, something happened in the family, I will always say, I want to bless them and I won't blame them. I will guide them to come even when there are difficulties. But I won't blame them. I won't be angry with them. When I talk with people who don't come to church, I won't say, why didn't you come today? Because that will convey a negative feeling. I can say something like this. I did not see you in church. Did something happen to you? Is, is anything happening to you? Now say this with me. I did not see you in church today. I did not see you in church today. Did something happen to you? Did something happen to you? Now when you say, did something happen to you, it's like concern. Instead of saying, why didn't you come to church today? When you say, why didn't you come to church today is an accusation. 
Have you noticed a difference? But very often we are affected by that, that feeling because he didn't come, so we're not happy. But we don't want to check on everyone and say, okay, why didn't you uh, to say, I didn't see you today. We don't want to do that. But we want to say, encourage people. God has a lot of blessings and a lot of good things happen in the church. And I hope to see you in the church next week. Say it positively. Now say it with me. A lot of things happen in church today. People and are encouraged. They are good testimonies. And I hope to see you in church next week. Then you will be strengthened by God. Then you will be renewed by God. And you can share your testimonies too. So I always look at the positive side. What can be done. And how God can change us. Okay? For instance, people say, my children disobey. They're not good. That's negative. You know, I, I mean, it's a fact. But then they might say, oh, my children are no use. They cannot do anything. But the positive is, even though there are difficulties with my children, God still love them. And I can love them to change them. Now, say it with me. Yeah. Even though when there are difficulties with my children, God still loves them. And I love them. And I can help them. I can bless them. I can strengthen them. I don't want to be angry with them. I don't want to be angry. And my peace and my love can change them. So for everything, there must be a positive side and a solution in Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? There is a solution in Jesus Christ. So pay attention to your thinking. Let me ask you. Have you woken up in the morning and said, oh, there's too much to do today. Oh, oh, I have to do this and do that. And, or when there's a lot of work in front of you, oh, there's too much to do. Has it happened to you? It's very easy, right? So when you are thinking like that, what should you do? You can say, whatever I do today, because I love God, God is very happy. God is happy in heaven, and God will reward me. Can you say this? <laughs> Whatever I have to do today, say it. Whatever I have to do today. When I do it for God, when I do it for God, God is very happy in heaven. God is very happy in heaven. And God will bless me and reward me. God will bless me and reward me. And I want to do this thing joyfully. I want to do this thing joyfully. Because I know God remembers the good thing I do. And I can have positive influence on the world. Let me ask you, to think positively like that, is it difficult? First, do you have faith in God? The point is, to be positive, we need to have faith in God. That God is gracious, say it, God is gracious. God is gracious. God wants to bless us. God wants to do good things among us. When we trust in God, God can do great things through us. So I can relax in God and have positive thinking. Everything is possible in God. Everything is possible in God. Nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing is difficult for and God. I can do great things. And I can go higher and higher. Hallelujah. So can you change your thinking like that? Yes. Now use the five steps to victory. Do you remember? Yes. The five steps to victory can be used for any situation when you want to change something. First, aware that we are thinking negatively. Second, what is it? Destructive. destructive. When I'm thinking negative, it's destructive. Number three. What the Bible teaches. What the Bible teaches. So, Bible teaches us to be have faith in God, believe that God will do great things. Number four. Pray. Pray to repent and to ask for strength. Pray to repent and ask for strength. Number five. Choose to obey. Choose to obey. I choose to believe that God can do positive things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, now. Positive, you know, our thinking affects our feelings. Our thinking affects our feeling. Negative thinking will produce negative feeling. Positive thinking can produce positive feelings. Now, what does that mean? Let me use an illustration. There are two old Christians. They're both very sick. 
and both will die soon. And one Christian said, I have been serving God all these years. I have loved God. I have given a lot of money. And now in my last days, I'm so sick and God doesn't help me. Oh, I get disappointed. One Christian. The other Christian says, Oh, I've served God all these years and God remember all the things I've done for Him and I'll, I'm going to go to heaven soon. And there I will enjoy the strength of the Lord and no more sickness. I'll be happy. Oh, I look forward to Jesus. These two persons, who can continue their joy? The second one. And the first person might have the danger of complaining to God and losing his relationship with God. There are people like that. They complain to God, how come I get sick? And what happens is they suffer. So the thinking, the thinking of the first person is things have to be perfect. Then God is loving me. When things are not perfect, God is not loving me. That thinking affects him. And when things are not perfect, then they say God doesn't love me. Let me ask you, have you ever had that thought? When you're suffering, you say, God is not loving you. Mm -hmm. Should we think like that? Yeah. Let me tell you, when Adam and Eve sinned, God said, because of this sin, what happened is when you work on the field, it will grow thorns and thistles. Remember that? In Genesis chapter 3? Because of Adam's sin, there will be difficulties in the whole world. Difficulties in the whole world because of the sin of mankind. It's not because God doesn't love us. No matter what, there is suffering. So suffering doesn't come from the lack of love of God, but it comes from the sin of mankind. So now we understand, when you suffer, when your children disobey you, it's because of their sins and the sin of the society, right? And when Christians are not good, because Christians have sinned also. So when we understand that, and we accept that, then we don't, when we have positive thinking, I can always do something to change the world. Say it. I can always do something to change the world. I can always do something to change the world. I can always do something to bless my children. I can always do something to bless my children. Then we have the positive thinking. The negative thinking is like this. Oh, they don't listen to me. Oh, there's no hope. So that's the negative thinking. When negative thinking, the feeling will always be negative, right? Yes. Because they say people are not good. People don't listen to me. And then they'll be unhappy. Now there's an ABC theory of uh, emotion management. ABC theory of emotion management. The A is the activating event. There's something that triggers us. Something that triggers our emotion. The A. B is the belief. C is the consequence. So something happened. For instance, the car broke down. When you're trying to go somewhere, the car broke down. The belief. God doesn't love me. God doesn't help me. Things are always difficult for me. When they think like that, the consequence is what? Worry, unhappy feeling, complain to God, right? But if the thinking, well, difficulties are common in life, that's okay, and God will help me. If the belief like that, see the consequence, you continue your peace to trust in God. Let me tell you, let me ask you this question. Do you think I have faced difficulties in my life? Or do you think things have been always smooth for me? For me? Oh. I have faced many difficulties. I've been mocked by people, attacked by people. You know, people tease me. People have done all kinds of things to me. But I continue to insist, God loves me. God has a wonderful plan. When I follow God, eventually everything will be good. I insist on that. You know, there were some people who attacked me and said, because I, I live in another country for many years. But I want to go back to Hong Kong to do ministry. When I went to Hong Kong, then I cannot stay in the same church. When I come back, I start another Chinese ministry. 
But then I went back to Hong Kong again. And I came back the third time, it was more difficult. And then someone said to me, if you had not gone to Hong Kong so many times, you would have a big church already. They didn't realize what God is doing in me. In Hong Kong, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. My whole life was changed. But I did not have the money right away. And some people, a member in my church before he said to me, Pastor Yip, if you had not gone to, gone to Hong Kong so many times, you would have a big church already. So he thinks that to have the big church is the most important thing. But for me, it's the most important thing to follow God's will. And I know God has a plan. So I keep on trusting in God. And when I went back to, to, to that country the second time, I was giving out tracts in the, on the street trying to do evangelism. And someone saw me and told my wife, she said this, look at Pastor Yip, he's giving out tracts on the street. In the past he has a big church and now he's giving out tracts on the street. They were teasing me like that. They were attacking me. But I said, that's not matter. But eventually God built up my ministry to, the, to a higher level. That I keep being positive. But these people were negative. They were Christians. They would say, if you had not gone to Hong, Hong Kong so many times, you would have a big church. And then, and then the other person said, now see, Pastor Yim is giving out tracts on the street. So they think that the pastor who is, has a big church is a successful pastor. The pastor who has to start a, business, uh, a ministry in difficulties is not successful. So they have this negative thinking. Many people use the thinking of the world. But I insist at that time, when people attack me, I insist, I say, when I love God and follow God, He has a wonderful plan. And I continue. And in that 10 years, God helped me to handle my inner feelings, my inner th thinking and feelings. And I learned this joyful victory that I can teach you today. And then God opened the way to ministry. When I pray more to God, God revealed to me many teachings. And so I can go to different countries to train people. Actually, there are not too many pastors that we talk about how to change your inner thinking to positive thinking. Now, let me use an illustration. The five points of victory. First, aware. When someone teases me, attack me, and say, Pastor Yin, you have gone to Hong Kong too many times. When he said that, I, I, I felt bad at that time. I felt bad. And then number two, I know that is destructive. And what does the Bible say? Trust in God and things will go well and God will use me. So I pray to God, Lord, take away my burdens, take away my negative thinking. Number five, choose to obey. I choose to believe. Yes, when I continue trusting God, God will open the way for me. And I now I see that my ministry now is much bigger than before. And I see people change in a short time. And I hope you are changed. But even if you are not changed, I will not carry the burden. If you are changed, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'll be very thankful. Let me ask you, have you changed at least a little bit? If you have changed at least a little bit, can you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. So all of you have changed. How many of you have changed a lot? A lot. Okay, very good. Let me say this. Even if you fail the exam, it doesn't mean you haven't learned it. The main thing is you learn to rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is good to me, and it's not hard to please God. Whatever I do for God, God is happy if I have a pure heart. And I don't want to have negative thinking. I don't want to have sins. I don't have, want to have any negative thing. Then you already have learned it. And you use the five steps to victory. Can you memorize the five steps to victory? Yes. Number one, aware. 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 Number two, destructive. Number three, what does the Bible say? Or oh, you just say Bible. Yes. Number four, Pray. Number five, choose to obey. So you remember that when you're about to blow up, when you're about to be angry, when you are thinking of something negative, immediately say, I'm aware. I'm aware. Yeah, it's destructive. So what does the Bible say? And then pray. I change it. And then the simple three step to victory is one, four, five. When you're aware, then you pray and you choose to obey. So one, that's the three steps to victory. Say it with me. 
First is aware, and then pray, and then choose to obey. Okay. Now, what I just said just now, positive, negative thinking produces negative emotions. Positive thinking can build up positive feeling, but it does not, does not necessarily do it quickly. But with time, it will build it up. Let me explain to you. One time I remember very clearly, someone said something very negative to me. And immediately I felt very bad. But I used a five step to victory. I said, it's his problem. I don't have to feel bad. And then I prayed to God and I feel peaceful. But when I went back home and sleep, and I woke up in the middle of night, when I woke up in the middle of night, I found out a pressure in my chest. I have some pain in my chest because I thought of that man again. And then I say, I choose to have positive thinking. His negative words doesn't mean it's true. I don't have to be affected and I praise God. The next day, I don't have that experience. What I want to say is, we can change the thinking in a short time, but the feelings takes more time. Say with me. We can change our thinking quickly. But to change our feelings, it takes more time. I use an illustration. Someone yell at you and you feel very bad, unhappy. And then you use the five step to victory. That is his problem. It's the same thing we said on, on Saturday. We don't have to eat garbage, right? Say it. We don't have to eat garbage. When he yell at me, it's his fault. If I did anything wrong, I'll say sorry. But if I didn't do anything wrong, it's not my fault. So I don't have to eat garbage. So then I say, okay, that is his negative words. Does his negative words have authority? Does it have authority? No. No. Whose words has authority? God. God's word. So God's word says, when I love God, when I follow God, God will bless me. And his words has no power in God. So I can say, okay, I don't have to be bothered by that. I don't have to think about that. I can rejoice in the Lord. Now, we can say, okay, I don't be, have to be affected. But just now, he just yelled at you. You have no use. I don't like you. I don't want to see you anymore. You feel bad inside. Will we feel joyful right away? No. No. Because our emotions takes time to heal. Then you say, how can we get healed? The key to get healed is all day long. The Lord is loving me. Now change the thinking. The Lord is loving me. I don't have to be affected. Now say it with me. The Lord is loving me. I don't have to be affected by Him. God has a wonderful plan in my life. When I love God, I don't have to worry about anything. He cannot harm me. I can rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And all day long if we do that. At least our emotions will get better, right? Now some people say, well, it's not totally healed. Let me give you this. The Lord gave me this. Even if you improve 1% a day, 100 days you're all healed. Then you won't feel bad, right? Can you improve 1% a day? Yes. 1%. If you are very unhappy, can you improve 1% in one day? Yes. Yes. But can you improve more than 1%? Yes. Yes, probably. Most people can improve by 30%, 40%. But they still say, I still have unhappy feeling. But you say, it doesn't matter. I have improved to a certain extent already. Say it with me. I have improved to a certain extent already. I can continue to improve. It doesn't have to be all healed today. Tomorrow, when I trust in God, you get better again. Day after tomorrow, I'll get better again. So this thought that God gave me is say, relax. We cannot change it right away. It doesn't matter. If we just improve a little bit every day, we'll be more and more joyful. 
And then when we get up, usually our mind is more clear. When you get up, and you get up in the morning, you say, thank you, hallelujah, the Lord loves me, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Did you do this this morning? No. Did I tell you that I do it every day? Yeah. Can you do it every day? Okay. When you wake up, and then when you're coming to church, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm going to hear the word of God, how to handle my life and have a fruitful life, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, do you think positive like that? At this moment, do you think positively, this teaching can change my life? Can you say? Yeah. This teaching can change my life. Yes. 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 I can have positive thinking all the time. I, I, have have I have can have positive feelings all the time. I I have have I'm getting better and better in Jesus. Now, do you think like that? But some people among you might be thinking this. Ah, oh, I learned too slowly. Pass a year. Ah, oh, it's too hard for me to learn. Eh? You can do it. I cannot do it. Now, my, maybe some <laughs> is talking like that in your heart. Is that good? No. no. But you can say, even if I learn 1%, 100 days I'll learn it all. Yeah. But you can learn more than 1%, right? Yes. So these words is what, how God teaches me how to comfort people. If you improve a little bit, thank God. Appreciate yourself. Now say it together with me. If I have improved a little bit today, I say you have done a good job to myself. And I thank God for working in my life. I have improved a little bit. And I'll continue to improve in the Lord. Can you think like that? Are there someone here who might say, oh, I cannot do it, oh, it's too hard. Actually, we can choose to be happy. Do you know that? Happiness, joy is a choice. Say it. Joy is a choice. Joy is a choice. Now, some people say, when I'm rich, when I have all the money, then I'm, I'll be happy. Let me ask you, are there people here who are poor and you can still rejoice in the Lord? Are there? So, if you look at the positive side, God can raise up my life, then I can be positive and then you can be joyful. So I hope everyone really believes, yes, we can be joyful more and more every day. So we start with the positive thinking. But positive thinking does not assure positive feelings. It will help to build up positive feelings. It takes time to build up positive feelings. What you do? When you feel unhappy, then you say, okay, I don't have to eat garbage. I don't have to think about the difficulties. Even when life is very difficult. The most dif difficult thing is what? Someone is about to die. Then you say, well, I'm going to die and I'm going to go to heaven. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Even when we have to die, we can look at it positively, right? Even if no food, okay, so no food. If no one helps me and I'm starving, 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 okay, I will see Jesus soon. If Jesus, this is how I end my life, I mean, how my life ends, that it's okay. I can rejoice in the Lord. Even when I'm good, starving, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But God will send you some help, right? So I hope in all difficulties, you're always positive. And then in the positive thinking, now, the positive thinking is in Jesus. In the world, people talk about positive thinking. But I'm talking about positive thinking in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Positive thinking in Jesus is, God loves me. Say it. God loves me. God wants to bless me. God has a wonderful plan. God can help me in all situations. No matter how difficult the situation is, God has a way to help me. So this is all positive. But when you're positive, you have to build up the positive feelings by praising God, loving God. And you can, if you at home, you can sing songs, dance, and then you can play the praise music, and then you dance, and then it will take away the burden. So every day we start with that. Now, should I finish with, now do you have any question about this? Positive feelings. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Yes? 
And if you have a question, please run to the front. Yeah, run to the front. What did you say? The ABC theory of emotion control. It's ABC theory of emotion management, not control, management. Emotion management. Okay. The activating event, A, B is a belief, C is a consequence. So the belief will affect the feelings. But just the belief is still not enough. We need to come to the Lord, praise God to change the emotions. So first change the thinking. For instance, let me give some illustration. Some people say they have a belief. I have to get married. If I don't get married, people will laugh at me. I don't know about this country. I went to other African countries. They said, they, uh, they, they said to me, uh, how's your mama? How's, how's mama? That means my wife. I said, my wife is not mama. And he said, I said, you know, in Hong Kong, not, not every married woman, no, actually, uh, one, let, let me start the story. One time, a few of us came to Kenya. And then they all called them mamas. I said, they're not mamas. They are single women. And they were surprised. They're single women? They're not married? Wow, they're not married? It's like, wow, that's something very bad. But in Hong Kong and many, many countries, it's okay to not to be married. Not to be married doesn't mean they will die. They can still live a happy life because they have, cannot find a, a good Christian man so they don't get married. It doesn't matter. But in Africa, it seems like they have to get married. They find a non-Christian to get married, some people. And so this belief, we have to get married, can make people feel very unhappy. I've met a lady like this. Well, this lady, she, we were in a country that we don't have this concept that we have to get married. But she believes she has to get married. So when she was single, she was always unhappy. She was afraid she won't get married. And then later she got married. She was unhappy with the husband. And she was unhappy all the time. And then later, the husband passed away. And then the woman was very unhappy because her husband passed away. So she was unhappy when she was not married. She was unhappy when she was married. And she was happy when she was widowed. She was unhappy for her whole lifetime. Because her belief is that, I have to be married to be happy. And I have to marry to, be a, to a good man to be happy. So this belief caused her to be unhappy all her lifetime. You know, we don't have to be to have certain qualities to be happy. We have Jesus, we can be happy. And when you're happy, it's easier for you to find a good husband or wife. Okay, Any, anything you wanna ask? Yes. The question is, what if the people around you are all negative about you and about other things? My answer is, don't eat garbage. Because it's their problem. Let me ask you, do people around you have problems? Yes. Do you find many good people around you? No. Do you find many good people around you? No. Not too many. So if we depend on them to be happy, we can never be happy. But we depend on God. So one thing is accept that all have sinned and fall short of glory of God, including us. So we're not perfect. And a lot of times our unhappiness came from our own thinking. Then we say, oh, I want to be successful, I'm not successful, I don't have money, people don't like me. So in the thinking, change make us unhappy. So we want, don't want to eat garbage from people or other people. But if they keep talking to me, what do I do? I learn to turn off. Turn off what they say. They talk to me face to face. They say, Pastor, if you have not gone to Hong Kong so many times, you have a big church now. When I listen to that, immediately I analyze. This, this person is thinking that you have to have, you know, successful and a big church uh, to be, you know, that, that's the way to go. But I realized that what he's looking at is just a big church. And he didn't realize what happened to me in Hong Kong. And that changed my life. So I realized that he doesn't understand that. So I would put that down. I say, it doesn't matter. What he says doesn't matter. It's, 
not good thinking. So I just turn off what he said, and I just insist that God helps me and I follow God, there must be a way out. And let me tell you, when I went back that time from Hong Kong, and it was difficult for years, the, it was difficult financially, but then what happened was, step by step, God provided for me, sometimes for a few months, sometimes for a year, sometimes for two years, gradually my situation got better and better. Sometimes the situation don't change right away. But if we continue trusting God, things will go better because seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. Amen. Any more questions? So the main point is we discern that is garbage. Yes. garbage. And we have garbage ourselves too. And then, but we don't tell them that it's garbage. Yeah. We be nice to them. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you. I, I work on that. I work on that. <laughs> Wisdom. Okay. And yes, speak loudly, please. Yeah, I will, I will ask a question. The question is like this. But what means one positive thinking becomes actually from the grace of God? By what means? By what means? Yeah. Okay, it basically comes from the Bible. Yeah. You, look, you read the Bible, remember all the promises of God. You seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added to you. And then whatever little good things you do for people, God will reward you. And the reward is 100 times this in this life and then eternal life in the future. So the reward is not just in the future, it's now. And also the presence of God, the peace and the love of God tell us that God is loving us. So we assure that God is loving me and helping me. And then when, I, when we do ministry, we can help people that means God is blessing us. So look at all the good things God, God has promised and is working now, everything. Even when you eat food, you say, thank God, or drink water. Thank God, God is loving me through the water he created. Yeah. Ah, water is so wonderful. I can enjoy the water and I can enjoy the life now. <laughs> so enjoy whatever we can have in the right way, not wrong enjoyment, not enjoyment of sin, but enjoyment of the good things of God. Any, any more question? Is this a choice? Can you come forward more and speak loudly, please? Please run, run up, sir. No, he, he raised his hand. No, he didn't, okay. So anyone have question? Because he raised his hand. Were you asking a question? Yeah, come forward. Can you speak from there? Speak from there. Speak loudly. Just speak loud. I, I, I want to know. You are talking about God blessing. But I want to know what are some of the guests think people like a God blessing? What did you say? Can someone be in sin and God still God bless them? Yeah. Can one still believe in sin and still receive God blessing? Okay, now. This question I answered before. We seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to us when we seek God and follow God. Oh, this has to be on. When people sin, they are separating themselves from the blessings of God and also from the relationship of God, unless they repent. So, uh, people, Christians who continue to sin, don't get the blessings from God. They still get the sun and the rain. They still get general blessings, but they don't have the joy and the peace and, the, and the, all the inner blessings and also abundance. Okay? So don't continue in sin. Tell the person next to you, don't continue in sin. Sins are destructive. Sins are destructive. Sins will steal from you. And see they want to steal from you and kill you and destroy you. We reject Satan. And reject sins. Okay? And always trust in God and then we can see the blessings of God. Okay, anyone else? Now, let me tell you, to have positive thinking and positive feelings, it takes practice. I practiced that 10 years mm. in order to be consistently joyful. It takes time. And when you fail one day, don't say, oh, I cannot do it. Immediately say, God is helping me. Anytime you're unhappy, you say, God is helping me. 
I can be happy in the Lord. God will give me strength. When I trust in God, God knows and then He will reward me. So always turn positive. Okay? Let me tell you, this is difficult for most people, not because God doesn't help. It's because many people cannot change the way of thinking. Yeah. They've been negative all lifetime. Always say, no use, nobody likes me, I cannot do it, I don't like people, people don't like me. They always think that they are eating garbage, recycle the garbage continually. So I hope if you have this habit, don't recycle the garbage. Get rid of all the garbage. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, yes? The middle of garbage. What does it mean? Garbage. Garbage means anything negative and doesn't belong to the Lord. For instance, people say you are no use, you are no good, I don't like you, you, are, you can do nothing good. You know, any of this. Or God won't help you, all these are garbage. So anything negative and that don't come from God. And those things that deny God are garbage. Something, this thing is not... Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. God bless you. Let's pray and then we'll end this session here. Let's stand up. Oh Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. This. 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 No sound. Oh. Hallelujah. Okay. Now it's better. It's better. Okay. At this point in the prayer. Please think of some negative thinking you have been having. And then you turn that negative thinking into positive thinking. Right now, everyone close your eyes and think about some negative thinking you have been... Now there is echo. Does someone know how to turn off the echo, the effect? Turn off the effect. Okay, everyone, now think of... Think of the negative thinking or negative feelings you have. And then you say, Lord, please forgive me. These are destructive. I want to believe in God's promises. I want to pro believe in God's grace, in God's love. No one can take those things away. I don't have to depend on people. One thing, because very often we depend on people to be happy. We don't have to depend on people to be happy. We can be joyful in the Lord. Even when things do not go well, we can still rejoice in the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let us all declare together. God loves me. God loves me. I'm important in the sight of God. I'm important in the sight of God. God has a wonderful plan in my life. God has a wonderful plan. In my life. God wants to do great things in my life. God wants to do great things in my life. God will help me in all difficulties. God will help me in all difficulties. There might be difficult people around me. Difficult people around me. But God can protect me. But God can protect me. And I don't need to eat garbage. And I don't need to eat garbage. I don't have to take negative words from people. I don't have to. Negative words, negative words have no authority. Negative words have no authority. Jesus' words has authority. Jesus' words have authority. I'm important. I am important. God can raise me up higher and higher. God can raise me up higher and higher. God can use me more and more. God can use me more and more. I can rejoice in the Lord. I can rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is this teaching important? Yes. Because most people have negative thinking and negative emotions without realizing it. So apply it to your life and then help other people to have positive thinking and positive feelings in the Lord. Now, the world talks about positive thinking. It's just from the world. But we talk about positive thinking because of Jesus, all the blessings of God and the love of God.